So anyway, right now the T's are playing a bit of a default. Seems that we are jumping in straight around with the pistol around. Smuya, armed and ready to try and do some damage flakes, but will he be able to find anything? Yeah, so this is something we are going to be looking towards. It is Fish playing, for the most part, very, very static. They're only going to be facing off the back of Keitra as he begins to murmur on forward. Going to face practically into the entirety of this T side as Imperial begin to rally off behind a few shots. Crucial going to lead that peak, but all in all, still nothing to be gained. Keita going to spot out that May, but Imperial, they're backing off. They're running away, and that's not too much information for Fish. Sure, they know the push is not quite coming in, but Mole, he's going to have his work cut out from now as this push begins to formulate over towards his B site. They're trying to take the fight towards him. Mole will fire off a pot shot, trying to do some damage, but no connection going through. But look at this, the Keita backstab. The man himself, the support player, slowly sneaks his way into position, ready to strike at the right moment. Will spot the head of both but whips it. Can't connect the shots. Tries to go back in. Well, eventually, we'll be able to take down Jacob. Smoother as well. Takes a little angle, does a fair bit of damage. And Keita finds another one of the round. Just reason to kind of try and do something here. Play to Smuya there as well, in fact, just not over-facing, not going over-zealous, and in very, I'm going to go out and say it's Smuya style, he sits tight, waits for the frag to come in, and allows the rest of their team to get into position, and it means it's guaranteed things go to side of fish. Yeah, that was a good round, obviously, smart play coming out from the end, hit with a good backstab as well, just catching Puri off guard there. What will be interesting, though, is we work our way through. They have Crucial back. Now, obviously, Crucial playing in America for a long time, apart from the scene. Before that, he was arguably the best player in the UK scene. Obviously, he, all he did was play with UK mixed teams, and Joey has an unreal ability with his orb. He is crazy. This is the thing. When he gets an orb in his hands, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him easily dispatching Smoot on a lot of these peaks he goes to. But that is if Imperial get themselves into a good situation economy before they start taking too much of a pounding from Fish. Imperial also got to be careful, right? Because when you look at Fish, it, it's the polar opposite of Imperial in regards to not being really to my basket. Crucial, you kind of are already arguing that. Thankfully, oh. Smoot releasing this one. It's going to be ever so crisp as he drops them dead with a USB triple kill for him. This is going to be a pretty delightful treat for Fisher early on as they're pretty much dead set in motion to take this one 2-0 to zero with no real response coming in from Imperial. Yeah, nothing they could do there. Obviously, funneled together. Smoother as well. It just sticks to the pistol because he wants to try and get that AWP out, but he doesn't give a damn. Goes for the peak, still tears his way through very easily. It looks like he's hungry for more frags in this situation as well. Wants to try and do the damage, obviously... There's SMGs, want to try and do a little bit of work here. At least get some bang for your buck off the back of the cash. But I'm surprised we don't even see that happen. Keita, though, eventually finds one frag upon Jacob, just leaving reason to try and sneak his way back through. Actually peeking off the left wall. Very easy for the opposition to peek in. We won't be able to get close. We'll be taken down in the end by Keita. So at least they do get some money on those SMGs. Yeah, they make a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's nothing too crazy. It is going to be the big one now for Imperial, though, where they do go into the rifles. They are going to be squeezing out everything they've got. It is going to be such an important round for them. They fall short here, they completely open up Fish 1, 2, 3, give them the opportunity to segue further and further into this match, but already we're actually met with a fairly early pause. Now, we can straight off the cuff go, this is going to be of a technical nature, but this is something that will help Imperial, gives them a second just to think things through. Though, you can argue, the same effect for the CT side, Fish are going to be going, alright, let's make sure we play seriously here. They know the importance of that early round start, after all, we talked about so much on the lead up to this. I agree with you, but the only thing is... And this matchup, I feel like it's going to be very different to what we expect out of the ordinary. I feel like, honestly, we're going to see a very aggressive play coming out early on from Smuya. He'll try and take the fight off the back of confidence from the early round. Most likely, just going to go for that early pick towards mid. That's what I'm assuming here, right? And Imperial, a lot of their rounds, nine times out of ten, it's slow defaults towards those A-bomb sites. So obviously, it's going to be slightly different because they have Crucial in the lineup now. Well, we, obviously not forever, but If he gets that one versus in. one, though, as you mentioned against yeah. Smuya, for example, then that already drops one player from the Linko Fish. Then they're left without the all presence there mm. in this round, banking on SMGs. Yeah. That's quite a big ask. And this is the thing, right? So if we see the early peak come out from Smear, he needs to hit his shot because he, he will be confident if he tries to go for the aggressive play. I'm not going to be surprised if that does come through. But if Crucial or Co can take him down, easy up on the side of Crucial, he then takes slow approach towards that A bomb site. It could be the reset coming in very early for Imperial. But it's just all lifts and butts at this point, just sort of speculating because of the common aggressive play style we speak from Smear. Let's see how that will actually go down right now as the push comes through. It will be Roma and Co actually working their way around. Smear situated towards the B bomb site. This is a lot better than what I actually expected was going to go down. I thought we would see something very overly aggressive. Just taking map control, playing it slow. This is smart. Nice position being utilized by Fish, though. Not running any risks. A whole lot better. This is a very well-structured, well-put-together CT side, which for a mixed team is actually a bit out of the ordinary in itself, right? You're actually seeing kind of a lot of thought put into this. So hopefully if they can get this to work out, this is where it all kind of rolls back into that formative package as Imperial are going to be looking to try and get their way into this round. But they're going for a bit of push and shove, but they're getting no real response, no push back from Fish, which is information all for this T side, but nothing really can do with it. The reason is going to be the big player in towards connector. He does waltz on a forward, looking through the tango with Roma. But still, no face to come in. Jenko, <laughs> but an instantaneous trade coming from Roma. 
just fails rewards for the CT side. Good so far, but obviously the trade can come back through. Crucial is going to take the fight, spots him out. Ooh, the tag goes through, but no kill just yet. Roma takes the secondary face, actually walks his way back in. This is leaving the Imperial in a very good situation now, statistically. They can try and regroup up, work their way towards one of these bomb sites. The bomb is easily grabbed out by Boaster as well, so they have time to play with. Smuya is still up, meanwhile, situated over towards the A bomb site, scoped in by toilets, but they have enough utility to try to scrape their way through. They also get another frag as well towards the B bomb site with Connor ripping his way through Keita. This is good. If they use their utility smartly here on this push towards the A bomb site and overpower Smoothie off the back of zoning him out, this could be a very good take towards A. Probably not doing that at oh! all. Smoothie not even going to get a fire shot off Jacob, somehow making it stick. Is Imperial, they're going to get the bomb down over towards A. The last man standing is going to be Mole. And, well, he can try and pitch a tent over towards B if he wants, because at this point, he is done and dusted, just trying to save the UMP, potentially going to search for the scraps of reason. That is looking like a bit of a, a far-fetched journey at this point, as he is just hopping around. And he's got a fair bit of utility, too, so so much value in him saving here. But this is that reset. You said it was happening. You predicted it. Props to you, because Imperial, they're going 2-1 to one up. There's a thing, there's always the potential. I expected it to be off the back of a lot more of an aggressive play coming out from Fish, but even then, Imperial played it very smart, right? A whole lot better. They just went trade for trade, but then got the advantage off the back of the secondary face coming out from Roma towards B as well. Keita just got caught off guard, unfortunately, and everyone just got taken down, right? Now, you look at things for Imperial. They have the all from Jacob. That can easily be traded out back to Crucial. Crucial with the open his hands this early into the game could be unstoppable, especially when they don't have that much payoff. And I buy will come out for Smoothie to try and counter things. Let's see how this is going to go down. This is one for the times, obviously. This will be a great matchup to try and see who's going to be superior coming in there. It's really quite historical in itself. Mm. You look at a lot of these names, you look at the head-to-head -head matchups, not the likes of Smuya versus Crucial and such. There's a, a real lot of kind of presence there, a big feat for these guys. You know, Smuya, a name who has been trying to elevate himself to an international scene up against a player who's been there. He's done that. He's yeah. take that check. It's true. It's the thing, you know, Crucial came in. He was the unreal UK or part of obviously not the UK, but still, he was always crazy, always playing in those mixed teams, always just doing work. You know, some might say just carrying a lot of his teams to those land wins. But now, obviously, coming back into the scene, back of Imperial, with the fabled weapon back in his hands, going up against Smooth, the man that's been trying to prove himself as that new up-and-coming Orpa, as the one that wants to tear his way through. Let's see if Crucial will still have a lot of that old pizzazz up his sleeve. Smooth scoped in, waiting for the first peak to come through. Reason. Tip turning his way around as well to try and link up with his teammates, but here's the difference. Look at the aggression coming out right now from Smoothie trying to take the fight upon Crucial. Spots him out ever so slightly as he comes through. But Crucial, too fast to handle, takes him down as they make their assault towards A. This is going to be a big pick now. Set the wheels in motion from Imperial to continue their charge on forward. The trenches have been dug and these troops ready to push on forward now. But Mole wants to trade things back. Goes for the counter aggressive push. The flash going to be aiding there as Mole will connect the headshot on towards Crucial. And bit by bit, things get closer and closer. But look at Jacob. Mole could catch him off guard as well. Mole continually pushing on forward. Gets us off netted now in the corner. There's Jacob going to make his position known. But Mole, he doesn't want to push forward. He now wants to sit dead set split in between the two of these players. And this is smart. Round though, the pre fire, it looked like an apple crumble was going to be served up, but at the end does bring it back to a good controlled sprite. Takes down Jacob. Connor towards the B bomb site, unfortunately. We'll be able to find a frag onto Jenko, though. That makes it a little bit more awkward. Keita trades out one, but Reason will take it back. But now it is all on that man. Towards B, 15 seconds left to play with. The site has a welcome mat down. Smoke goes through as well, but bounces quite awkwardly. Not too fantastic. We'll be able to get the bomb planted in the end, though, and secure the bomb just in the nick of time. Obviously, left with a one versus two. His final bit of utility has been used. Trying to go for the big edge. Shot was come through upon Mole. But Roma had the superior angle. We'll be able to execute in there. Fish one, two, three. Very, very awkward now for Imperial as Fish. They bounce their way back in instantly. Imperial, it's not what they needed. You get that opening round on the board, you need to try and keep things rolling. They're in a good situation with the weapons actually scavenged as well. And now they're left in a bit more of an awkward one, obviously. Not a fantastic amount of cash across the board. They can still work their way around it, though. The buyer's coming through. That all pump be coming out, though, and it seems like they will be lacking one rifle over on both sides. Nade-wise, it's actually pretty good, though. Yeah, and the utility, I think, is the, is the big saving grace here. They can now set themselves up to go for any sort of fancy push they want, and the smokes and such are just the cherry on top in that regard. So all in all, I think Imperial, they're not out of this one, but it's just going to be a bit more of a, a harder one to work for. But the more you have to work for something, the more rewarding it is to eventually achieve it. Imperial, they're going to know that. They're going to be running with that message. They will look to get themselves these early picks already, some aggression. They're going to set themselves up to be short. And I do think this B site is something that's so, so favoured in UKCS, and there's a big reason for it. A lot of these players just really enjoy being able to take it and can make it work so, so much in comparison to this A site. Connor is about to jump face, trying to do some damage as he just went for the pot shot, but unfortunately couldn't connect upon anyone just yet. Roman is going to fall back as well, just trying to hold a close angle. Everyone is now on their way 
towards the bomb site. They should get something very close. Somehow they have the drop on them. They have no idea what has just gone on there. Imperial catch them so off guard. I mean, that's crazy. Most are getting away with those Tech 9 kills as well. Very odd that they just had no control over towards short. That point into the round. Obviously, the final headshot comes through off the back of Reason as well. And Fish just looked confused. That was crystal clear for Imperial. Yeah. You can't knock that. They didn't lose a single player. And that kind of leads me back to that point where I said a lot of teams like playing this B site. When do you scrim a UK team on OFAS? It's very, very rare you actually find a team prioritize working on their A site. So many players now really sit over towards B and, and really kind of get that test down. But that, that comes with errors in itself. But Fish, you know, kind of rocking the boat for someone as they get stuck there just looking completely dazed. They've got to get themselves out of these headlights if they're going to be playing like that because that's where Imperial will take full advantage of you. Yeah, that was very odd, obviously. A round that could have been potentially saved if a few adjustments were made, but not the way it is going to crumble. Obviously now leaving them in an awkward situation. That reset going through to Imperial sure it did damage, but obviously that T-side economy, they still had money to play with. They weren't their way back in. Fish, though, the reset comes through now. They are completely broken. They're going to need a huge payday loan to try and sort themselves out. But their credit score is too bad, so they've been denied, and they have to wait out for their next week of payments to come through Flake. So just stuck with these pistols. Not really the best situation to be in. They do have a, a very small amount of utility. It's just one flash. The end of the day. Our conclusion of the spear of the tail of the B-Site in UKCS comes back to the point that Imperial, are they going to be the team to overuse this B-Site? Is it going to be their, their one true calling where they just go B over and over again? It's, it's not something we want to look into this round too much at all, to be honest, because they're up against pistols. They know that, you know, best case, you can try and get the information from there, and it's a good site to try and isolate. Is 9 times out of 10, teams go aggressive on short. That leaves a site completely open to a monster push, and then you're left with a smoke acting as the parting parting gift. Interconnected, get themselves a similar take on towards Smuya, exactly as we talk about. As he's like, he's on the site, so he's going to have a perfect gift on towards short, and bit by bit, the frags roll in. Another perfect round for Imperial, and let's mark Do some damage on his way back in, trying to deny it oh, if possible, but unfortunately, it is short lived. Taken down in the end, executed there by Crucial. As they now tie things up in that 3 3 scoreline. But the double eco has come through. Obviously, the economy was so badly battered. They have to wait another round here. Essentially, it's the tail that Imperial should be able to lock down their fourth round before Fish even have a chance to try and respond. This sets Imperial up on the right foot, right? They're going to be stepping on forward now, looking to continue to march up to this score. And if they get themselves on towards four, which is the, the pretty damn right expected outcome here, then you kind of start to look at their fifth and that kind of next buy. And Fish, they're starting to lose kind of control of how things are going. These buyers look so good. Just kind of fell apart. This round, at least, it is just going to be the free peek in towards mid. Fairly box standard stuff. Jacob just going to rip the head up the opposition. The spray down, an interesting one, but still, netting all the rewards it is going to be directly a net. Frags are plenty. Reason being able to take the smear towards the end there. Oh, Mar actually does fire back. Takes down Crucial. Some of the players are low on the side of Imperial as well, so damage can be done with this USP as he hammers back on the trigger, attempting to slip his way up towards toilet. So obviously a very awkward situation to be. Don't expect too much out of Mole, but there is a little bit of a chance for him to possibly force out some rebuys if he can connect these shots. Not against Connor though, 100 HP. The man will be quite hard to take down. Takes the fight anyway. Actually does come out on top in that scenario. Will execute him. Grab onto the AK as well. Mole ooh, spots out another player but realizes it's time to dip out of there. If he can potentially hold on to that AK, would be the best case scenario. Other than that, just stay alive. If they push towards him, maybe take them down, but Imperial don't really have too much of a reason to hunt either. Their economy isn't absolutely stellar. Yeah, exactly. Flip through Imperial. They're the ones sitting there going, right, now, let's go find the bank. Let's go and kind of put these in there, keep them safe and sound. And it's kind of a similar sort of narrative for Mole as well, right? So both of these teams, they don't actually want to bump heads at all. They just want to completely split away from each other, stand on opposite ends. As it is, it's going to be that bomb ticking on away, and we are going to see a little bit of push coming towards B, but Mole just completely running away, actually smokes off as well to Monster to make sure he can wholeheartedly have no chance of being taken down, and that kind of really meets that point that we talk about. Either way, 3-4, to four, Imperial, they're the ones up at that lead now. They get the ADP still into the hands of Crucial, of course, a man to really watch. And we're going to get to see that head-to-head -head of Suya. It's true. The orbs are coming out. The big dogs are on display. It'll be interesting to see how this one actually does unfold. Smuya, once again, heading over towards that new bomb site. Are we going to see more of a passive play coming out from still? Smuya just working his way over. Yeah, it seems like he would just be sort of chilling towards B as per usual, obviously. Watching over by Monster. Meanwhile, we have the aggression coming through from Crucial a little bit more heavy handedly. As his teammates slowly encroach forward, trying to take map control. It'll just be passive now, watching that angle. If anyone does go for an information play or an all out aggressive, aggressive play even. 
down long to try and take the fight over by a party, he will be able to spot them out. But nothing of the case will be going on for Fish. They're just playing it very slow, very calm. Yeah, they are beginning to at least kind of build a wall somewhat, very cementing themselves down in towards these hallways they find themselves stuck upon. Imperial, bit of a similar sort of story for them though. As you say, they're not really gaining too much ground. You see a bit of a boost coming in as they will look for a bit more information leading up on towards that A site, but so far not a singular face either. Neither of these teams in this round refusing to face off yet again, very much almost as if we're seeing an eco versus eco unfold. But that clock is going to keep on ticking, and I can't help but feel like Imperial, that clock, that time that's a commodity for a T side, they're not getting really anything out of it right now. 40 seconds left though, they've got to gain some ground, you can see so much sound being made over towards A, really giving up a lot towards Mole, he's going to feed that back to the rest of his team, and this really feels like it's set up for Fish right now, they hold all the cards, Imperial, they're sat going all in. It's true, Mole ready to strike from behind, easy frag, it's aggression here. Takes a couple more shots than necessary, but we'll take it down in the end, keeping that aggression going with the AK in his hands as well, hot on the trigger. Tries to spot the rest of the players. Smuya also eliminating Boaster. They should be aware that the players want to be bomb site is the true attack. Rover headshot comes through. There's another frag going the way of Jenko as well. So this is Jake now standing. And he eventually will fall on the back of Roma. An easy round working through for Fish 1, 2, 3 there. And that's the thing. They tried to play it slow, but they didn't force out any utility. They didn't really do anything. They just played it slow for the sake of it. But at that point, when they did finally go for the play towards the bomb site, there was still so much utility left for Fish, but they didn't even need it. They still had the advantage of manpower, they were in a better situation, they weren't zoned out at all by Imperial, and they were just able to find the easy frags and lock things down. If you don't open up your wallet, take out your money, and just start throwing it on the floor and burning it, do you? That's a direct equivalent to what Imperial just did with the time. Then there's no value in them doing what they just did. They've got to change pace. You can already see them really up the ante this time around. Is already going to flash themselves in. Jacob going to be the supporting actor this time around. It's a fair play to them. They're making a change. But the picks are still not rolled in. The cavalry is 23. They're starting to respond. Do some damage now. Taking that play towards here. Bombsite, so obviously, Mole is there once again. He's been such a nuisance. Single handedly has been kind of the only reason Fish 1C3 has been able to keep control towards the A bomb site. And he will find another crack once again, repeating history. But Crucial finally starts to do some work with the AWP. This is not the Crucial we expect to see. Usually a lot more prominent in terms of the opening frags he's been able to achieve. This time around, a kill on the board, though. It's better than nothing. Will equalize the situation. Leaves them in a 4 versus 4 that does favor the T's. They have a ridiculous amount of utility to work with as well as they try and take this onslaught towards A. Bit by bit, things get closer and closer. The smoke say, oh, I'm going to find them landing them all. off to try and force that AWP away from Smoo, just making sure he can't stand over towards Transformer. Throw him back to the position with the M4, swings out, finds himself one, looking to double dip now, it's crucial. The lead shot with the MP on lands to flip on towards Roma. The pistol of Smuya rattling a few away, but doesn't quite connect, goes to the repeat with the AWP, doesn't land that either. And with 25 seconds left, the bomb plant is going to be snuck on in. Keita and Co, they can't get up the Molotov, it's completely blocked off their path. This retake has been completely closed down. Jacob swinging into position, cuts down any sort of coming in, tag after tag after tag, damage after damage. Fish, they don't really have too much of a chance to it. So scared to try and take this fight and they get dismantled when they finally commit to it. Smooth in the end though, finds the headshot on Crucial, but it is not enough as Jacob takes him down, leaving them in a four versus four, sorry, a four to five scoreline now as they work their way through. It's, it's just awkward. They look so timid on the retake there. Obviously they were blocked out. They knew they were gonna get executed if they went for push from the smoke. Timing wise though, they left it way too late before they tried to go for the attack. They peaked individually as well. Obviously Jenko getting taken down a little bit beforehand. Not the best showing so far from Fish in some of these rounds. Left an awkward situation here as they try and take that fight with that bite as well. Smuya, he definitely can be annoying to try and deal with when he's up close personal like this, but will he be able to repeat history or will he be executed this time around? Gonna be a bit of a weighty game, but we are gonna find out, of course. We also did talk about Mole on the AWP, which is something we are gonna witness somewhat here in this round. A flash is gonna go off from Smuya. He's gonna be there ready to just toy with the idea of diving on through or backing off with a 5-7. Two very different options, but to the center of unique opportunities. As face will come for Imperial, they are going to begin to go on themselves out towards this A site, and really, bit by bit, Fish, they know they're in trouble. They stay part of the game, and already a bit of a need to come in from Roma. The boost actually going to bear some plenty of damn printable rewards, as Reason is going to fall in the process, and that does give them that one man advantage. But things can so easily change here at the back of Imperial's positions. 
That angle being held by Molt. Should be deadly if Jacob peeks into oh. it as he just walks his way through, blissfully unaware of what was waiting on the upside of Toilets. Molt now taking him down, leaving them in such an awkward spot. This game's so back and forth. Every time someone gets around, it's instantly reset. Molt as well, another frag goes through, he takes down Crucial. Molt is the only reason Fish are able to pick up these rounds right now. Single-handedly, he's just doing so much work. The backstab from Smoo as well now falls everything just into the back pocket of Connor. He's got to try and do it all on his lonesome. A feat that, you can imagine, might prove too hard for Tariq to work his way through. Ah, Massive after crumble has been served up there. Smoothie in the end will find the frag. And they equalize the scoreline once again. This game just can't help but go neck and neck, can yeah. it? Both of these teams just one-upping each other each and every little round. We've seen, for the most part, one after one. We did see the, a small little string coming from Imperial as they got themselves three in a row. But aside from that, really nothing too fancy. It's just been kind of sitting there head-to-head, -head, four to four, five to five and such. And... You know, we've already kind of credited off one player you were talking about, Moe, but you kind of have to look across the board, take a quick glance at every single player here, and we're seeing a lot of impact coming from just the utility that the, the team flashes, and for a mixed team, that's something you do look towards and go, you know what, well played on that front. You've got to give props to both of these lineups for that, actually. Just being smart. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, obviously. Imperial, you kind of expect them to have a little bit more structure behind them because they are a team. The only difference maker is that Crucial's in the lineup, and if anything, that should just add to them being higher up there. They should have more prowess behind them because of that. And then with Fish, it, it's kind of awkward because it's like, is it a mix? Is it XL? Is it something not quite as good as <laughs> it's either? It's an identity crisis, right? Yeah. You, you just don't quite know what name to call them. You know, they've already been coined by a fair few, basically XL123 at this point, because it is almost that hybrid lineup. Yeah. And obviously that's the thing, obviously, with XL that folded as well, you didn't really expect to see this very reminiscent lineup, obviously, instantly coming back through. but in the form of more of a, a carefree sort of mixed team environment where maybe they can play a little bit more aggressively, the roles aren't as well defined. And interestingly enough, the double up setup does come into play now. But it seems that they are going to go for what we expected, Keita being on the secondary up, but Mole has actually taken the up off the hands of Smoo. He did that in the, pre uh, the prior round and now he's going to keep to it as well. So Smoo back on the rifle, still very good with rifles. I mean, it's not the worst case situation. And uh, it'll be good to see what Keita can do with an AWP as well, obviously. Kind of the OG when it comes down to warping sort of this sort of fish one two three lineup. Well, certainly only one way to find out. That's just to take a glance as this round is going to begin to unfold. The pause being washed away in the sand. Already coming from Smuya, and that is just awkward right there. It doesn't land a single shot by one run towards reason. Those pistols as you get a free run towards them. Just a bit of a shooting range as they tap on through. Pick up a rifle at zero cost. Crucial. Gonna lap that up as he's got Kevlar. Yeah, that was so weird. Obviously, just take the fight. Dryer just peek your way through, hoping to do something. I mean, might work with an AWP, because obviously you have the drop on there. It's one shot, you dispatch him and move on, but very awkward, especially as he didn't connect to anything. Mole, though, with the AWP in his hands, he's so powerful when it comes down to these easy situations to be in. Choke points galore as he just keeps going for the peaks. Massive for Ags here on his way, now leaving Reason and Boaster to try and claw it back. Already, though, this round's gone, and this is what I mean. Mole towards that A bomb site. If Mole's not getting at least sort of two frags around, that's when they let things go. If Mole's able to actually find the kills, they win the round every time. It's not just find the kills though, he pretty much does it all, right? Yeah. It just has so much impact in not just finding frags that have no value, no. Every frag he finds actually just puts the momentum of that. Oh, and, you, know, you saw it right there and then, for example, sure it's on the, on the pistols on the low buy, but it's even more important when you're up against those pistols because then they go into the hands of ability, they're a little bit less safe and more kind of running wild. So for him to be able to shut them down with those picks, that's so much more rewarding, so it's not just a man padding his stats, it's a man stepping up the plate and going absolutely huge. But can he keep it there? That's the question I want to ask. He's got a three-map series, potentially, depending on how things swing. We're still going neck and neck around, six to five up in favour of Fish. Is it going to be him to inch it out ahead and, and carry them on forward, or is he going to eventually start you know, peeling off? Is the rest of the team going to respond as crucial? Deletes him from existence straight away with a peek from him. Yeah, huge kill coming out there early game from uh, Crucial. It's hard to call because obviously that's the thing, kind of, Mo is that high impact in game leader. Individually, he can still sort of go neck and neck with the rest of his teammates. He leads by example in terms of his fragging power and also the amount of strategy he has behind his calls. But it's going to be interesting to see if he will not burn out or if he could potentially get exhausted if they starve him once. They go for this play towards the A bomb site. Roma and Co. do damage though as they tear their way through. Jenko obviously is going to right there for one reason. Keita will take down Jacob and Crucial find a man to fall. They got the opener and it looked good. You are able to take down Mole. That's the man that's really been the stopping power. He's been the one whittling you down almost every time you peek him, being able to get those opening kills on the board, if not 
two. And now you kill him. You then want to try and take your play towards the bomb site. But at that point, it just looked careless. It looked like they just sprinted their way in, didn't really attempt to do too much, didn't use their utility too efficiently, and we just got torn to shreds. That's the standard UKCS B site bomb push, though. We've seen so, so much from every team of both of us. And that's where the over-reliance on the B-Site comes in as well. It's the almost, all right, things aren't working. What do we do? Let's just go be quick and aggressive. It's the same thing over and over again. This time, it's just going to be a bit of a shift range D. And if you use the rifles, it's just things across the board a bit of a three. They're happy because not only are they really able to find themselves two rounds, they get a third just hand them some free willy because Imperial, they can't respond at all. They're on pistols. Yeah, basically just had to take the fight, sprinting their way through. Mo and Smuya just didn't work. Obviously, Smuya was some... Uh, Interesting shots as you got those wall bangs off and then mold just up close personal. Giving them giving them the punch, giving them the death punch. Hurts. Painful stuff, man. Hopefully they can kinda of repeat that too though. I think again you kinda of look towards the Your half is yours. You're eight to five up. Look for ten five. If you can get a ten five, Imperial are gonna be going, how do we let it slip away from five five, six six? How do we let how do we let it go that far? Suddenly fish one, two, three, they turned on us and now they're there just going for that death punch, landing the uppercuts, getting all the jabs in Imperial starting to let their block down. So you can already see a, a bit of a change up in this round, starting to put a bit more emphasis on towards the next one. They have handed it for the most part. Smooth is just going to fall back towards the outer echelons of that A site. This begins to make a bit more presence in towards the inner lanes of toilets. But really nothing to be gained from Imperial as well. But this boost coming in from Crucial could net that first pick. Boost does come through. You get him inside elevated angle. Spot it out, and there will be the frag. Easy pickings. This is better. I mean, honestly, it looks like they're not really using Joey too much to their benefit. Crucial isn't really being sent into situations where he can get those opening frags. Normally, you see him roam a lot more, going for those aggressive opening picks. He is your AWPA, but he can also be your entry frag because he can do so much work with a weapon. But it's been a lot more passive, and sure, that's the style of play Imperial want to work with, so it makes sense where you do hold him back a bit. But it just seems like he's not really being able to go for those aggressive peaks as much. Information has been given to Gendo here as well. Does hear out a lot of players from their way through. Timing was a little bit slow, but they do make it work in the end, leaving themselves on a two versus two. But Smuya is there to try and respond. Trying to get for a shot. They might find it. Crucial. Kind of dart on board, trying to force the plant, but he's done so much damage to the fire and the flames. This is not good at all. As Roma with a rifle long range picks off the head of Connor. Ah, one HP, this is not going to work out. Adam Smuya gets up on top of the boxes, takes them down with a pistol. The fish one, two, three, they take it nine to five. Working nine to five. How does the rest Definitely going to get go? into it. I, I don't know the rest that. of the lyrics, but. Yeah. Not the UK Masters Choir going. I can't remember that. It's a good song, though. <laughs> it is I quite, think. quite a good song, maybe. Yeah, Pretty well. good ballad. I think going back to what you were saying, though, about Crucial, I kind of do agree with you. Do you think it's a, a Navi star scenario almost? Because a lot of people were looking at the fact that their coach recently is just kind of. Well, it's Starrix, of course. And that was criticized as being perhaps, you know, they're just being too much in towards Starrix's play style, but they haven't been able to utilize their players as much. Is it the similar sort of thing here? Imperial just trying to constrain Crucial into their style of play, and he's not being able to get to run wild, so to speak? I mean, it's interesting, obviously. Imperial, they have been playing it very slow, but they've not really been drawing out utility, right? It's like kind of, you play it slow so you can force out your opponents to have nothing into the late round. You played the early game slow and steady. When you get to the late round, you try and whittle them down so at least they don't have too much sustain left or they don't have any real utility and you can just sort of pick them off at that point. But it just looks like they're just sort of sitting back and already peeking. They're giving up no information, so there's no reason to actually use any of those nades. This one around though, Smuya misses the opening shot. Mole does trade it out as per usual though. And Crucial dies once again, leaving them in a bit of an awkward tight spot as they try and find their way through. If they can get the secondary frag back onto Mole, there's still a lot to play with, but Mole does so much damage. Boaster! No boasties have been elevated today. They are still still down. My boasties are flaccid. How is Mole still standing as well? I don't know, though. Boasties are alive. Mole is still alive. Eventually, Roma will fall in the process, but Mole is going to be trying to make this two versus two stick. The bomb is going to tick on away. Keita, maybe the supporting edges gets right behind Reason. This could happen, Connor. So far out of the action. That bomb is going to tick on down, but Fish123, they're holding this one pretty damn tightly. Connor going to opt for a bit more long range back. Peaks out, goes for the taps. Bit of a struggle, but will eventually be able to dismantle Keita. And a one versus one. Mole, the legend, gets Connor, and he just sticks at a few. Yeah, that's smart. Just straight holds it. Doesn't peek. As soon as he peeks, too late. Yeah, they've just kind of owned it at that point. It's just Mole. I, I can't help but look at Mole right there and, and put him up on a pedestal and say, you know what? Well played. You did, you practically did it all there. Sure, Keita got that one yeah. pick to, to bring it back to a bit more of a contestable scenario in the retake. 
And, and you can look at that and go, you know, well played on that front. But Vol, for the most part, he should have been dead after finding that first yeah, thing, he, let alone the second, third, or, or fourth. And obviously now, uh, the new thing we brought in for the playoffs for UK Masters, it is going to be uh, 17 round halves. That's now what we're playing as we work our way through. Jenko's going quite big, though, obviously, into this first round, round 16. This is a... <laughs> Mole finds a frag there as well. <laughs> I didn't even notice this. I just kind of looking at you, just admiring the beard. Yeah, and yeah, look I back wonders. and go, oh, there's some rifles. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, so I have just been told we're going to have to restart the entire game. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want to see... Uh, Imperial, they just... That was so unfair that Mole was just so brutal on towards them that they are just going to have to... White point of slate, starting again. Yeah, it turns out my Kess has been playing on Crucial's account, so we're going to have to redo the game. Literally does Yeah, it. that's Literally classic. Dozy, man. classic well, I'm classic assuming move. we are live for the second half now. <laughs> Gotta make that assumption. Let, let, let's go with it. We'll see if things change. For now, though, it is going to be Fish looking to funnel out on towards the feed side. The USB is going to pass away. Connor going to find a sort of crispy, clean headshot on towards Jenko as oh. he begins to lock even further. Boaster going to do the work on towards Noel. And this is looking pretty damn good. So we are at least going to change things. Gets the follow-up tag out of frag on towards Short. As Crucial is going to fall. Keats is just another with the clock. Smooth you're on towards Reason. And bit by bit, way back in towards the Fish 1-2-3 side. 4K to try and kick things off. I mean, that is absolutely phenomenal. Works his way through, completely clears out the site and leaves them in such a good situation as they really tear it up. Now, obviously, as well, Fish, dominant half towards the end there. 10 rounds, obviously, this is round 11 now. Locked into their bank. you just got to imagine as well, they're going to work their way through. That's going to be in a situation of, sort of, you know, 13 rounds in the bank before Imperial can really do anything. It's certainly going to be something that's ever so important in terms of Fish 1, 2, 3 and the idea that they want the takedown overpass. It is their map pick after all, as yeah. well, bear in mind. So it's something that you would argue it's pretty damn important to be able to take your map pick in a best of three series such as this. And, you know, Inferno as well, you can almost glance ahead somewhat and go, you know what, Fish 1, 2, 3, we've seen some good stuff from them on Inferno. So it wouldn't be surprised to go back to that kind of 2-0 prediction. Either way, we don't want to get caught, you know, too much a deer in headlights. We want to focus on the present, which is just this response coming in from Imperial in terms of a tidbit of Kevlar. They've got a helmet on two of their players. They've got the scout in play, which is there to try and find the tags. But for the most part, it's very light investment. Yep, it's true, obviously. If Connor can do some work with the scout, it kind of works both ways. Obviously, long range, he can tag them down low, the pistols can finish them off, or the pistols can tag them, and he can finish them off with a scout. He's just going to be basically roaming around, trying to land some tags, essentially. His job is to play a little bit more fluid and try and transfer damage onto fish. The aggression towards the A-bomb site, though, seeming like it is getting ready to try and unfold. The smoke starts going through, the Molotovs as well to zone them out. Flashbangs in to keep them dazed and confused about the onslaught that is coming their way. As they take that fight up close to personal by toilets, Mole will be leading the charge. He did work here over on that CT side. Can he do it again? Now on his tee half. That's right. Nice in the corner, whips out the SMG and dismantles Jacob bit by bit as he chalks it up to a smooth little headshot. Crucial and Co are going to hold down towards B as this bomb is going to find itself just heading on over. Oh. go fast, Boaster. Connor. He relentlessly for the CT side, continuing the fight. But things still favouring fish, but the exact step the pistol has to go huge, drops the bomb, goes back in. Boaster, gonna make this one work. Well, look at the time. They've done it. Boaster's locked it down. Obviously, no time to get that bomb planted. Mole working his way through, arrives on the site, couldn't do anything. Nearly gets taken down as well towards the end there. That is arguably the best case scenario Imperial could have asked for at that point. You work your way through, you only leave one man alive, no bomb plant goes down. Their cash will be very starved. As you can see, obviously, Mole's the only man surviving. He's the only one with an actual weapon. The rest of them have to invo uh, invest heavily because they just have to at this point. They're going to be broken either way. The buyers come out for Imperial now. They have such a huge chance to try and flip this on its head. It looked like it was going to be, obviously, that sort of 13-6 scoreline. Uh, sorry, 13-5 scoreline before anything could really work their way through. Now, Imperial, obviously, with that six rounds on the board, potential to bring it back through. But they lose the first man. Smoother as well. More damage done. The Deagle coming through. This is not how you wanted this round to to go. It's gonna be said, don't count your chickens before they hatch because Fish 1, 2, 3, they're still here to play. Just because they got pistols, just because they are in a tug of war that is child versus man, right now it's looking like the child is gonna win. The teenager's starting to give up a bit of a fuss, a riot over towards this B site. As his pistols already with two picks, already gaining weaponry off the back of that. Sure, a few of their players have started to get taken down in terms of damage, but the two man advantage means so much towards a T site such as this. He didn't get his chicken tendies, so he's not very happy. As they set themselves up, they're ready to try and push on their way towards this B bomb site. Shots will go out to try and force them back. Nothing really going on just yet, though. A bit of a stalemate has occurred as the 
Tees know they're in a position to potentially try and pick this one up. And it is a vital round for them. The same can be said for the CTs, though. They don't want to run the risk of losing this round, completely resetting their economy and allowing Fish to get into the situation they should have got to, arguably, before they actually got taken down to that previous round. Still, time to play with, but Utility is starting to lack over on the side of Imperial. The double push comes through. Mole plays it so smart as he takes down not only one member of the side, but a second as well. And the final one you thought would have been taken down there, but Crucial actually does overpower Jenko. Trapped towards a V-bomb set, though. The bomb can be planted. It's a one versus three with 37 HP. There's not really any chance Crucial can do too much into this one. I wouldn't be surprised if he just holds back, tries to stay alive, and kills them if they hunt. And that's what he's looking for, but you, you, you've got to look into the banks right now, just dive deep into the statements of Fish123 and just realize how much they've just been saved by finding this round. You talked about how things were, were so murky for them and how this completely cut away that whole 13-5 scoreline. If anything, all this does is strengthen things now. The thing is, it's so awkward because it looked like, all right, Silver Linings come through. They can now get themselves into a really good situation economy-wise. They can try and get the AWP out, lock things down their CT half, right? Get themselves into a good situation to work with. Scary factor is, now Fish are in a better situation. The buyers will come back out. They have a nice amount of cash to play with. The same can very much not be taken. They won't be able to get a good buyout for a while. And now Fish as well, obviously, uh, they're on round 12 at this point. They're going to lock down round 13 very easily. Imperial, it's going to take them so long before their economy allows them to get that AWP out that is so proficient here on Crucial is they kind of need that game changer. They need something to allow them to be a little bit more aggressive that by that point, they would have already been starved to death. Well, you're already pretty much looking at what is effectively like 13 and 6, and 9 times out of 10, you look at statistics, you see these sort of matchups eventually be shut down as a 69, a 68. Things just usually don't get going because you can't get it going. But what the material is say, it's just such a squeeze. The pistols in this round with the Kevlar can't get anything done either. Jenko, Janko, just going to pierce into the Roma Shaw, gets dropped down to 7 HP in the progress. But at the end of the day, it's still just that, progress. Two picks for them, gives them the segue up on towards pretty much any site they so choose. Just they want to rotate down towards B, or be my guest, go and do it. There's no one there to stop you. All in all, it's still looking pretty damn good for this T site. It's not a worse situation to be in, you know. There's still more they can actually bring into this right now as they do make their approach towards A very slowly. They're playing with a lot of the time because there's no reason to react quickly into this. They know they've essentially won the round at this point. As you have three CTs left with no real weapons. They know the economy is broken. So why wouldn't they just play to their advantage? You use just those trade. AKs. Yeah, just go for the trade. Base it off range. It's a simple round. Point and click execution is what springs to mind. We're clearly a bit of a random game. Find it on Steam now in the market. Stand the stuff. People come in and it is just that guy left to his grave. Mole, the drive by on towards Jacob, just showing us off a little bit of his aim, his prowess. Oh, it is going to be reason. Just the last man standing. But already looking a little bit bony in this one. And he's already very much ready to walk into his own grave as he's going to step on towards Long. Has the deagle in that duel, but no, nope, nothing more. Doesn't even fire a single shot really to just cut that ball away. Roma takes him down. Is this scoreline just getting pretty damn brutal for the fish side? They're looking so, so strong. Yeah, they've just been... They've been dominating, right? And the thing is, as we said, sure, it's awkward that they got that reset. And we thought, oh, okay, this is where things are going to change. But they're in such a better position off the back of it. That double eco that comes out for Imperial, that's going to be the fault in front of the board this round. They back right. into the game. I've completely even forgotten where we are in Yeah, that was good. I mean, <laughs> hang on. Right. Fish had 10, so it's 13, yep. and that's 6. Boom. Maths. Woo! Job, job done. Excited. <laughs> Wait. Oh, don't worry. That's a stupid question. <laughs> You're right there. Yeah, sorry. It's just want to have bit a bit of a brain aneurysm. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> bit of a, it's all good. Just recover for a second. It's Things all fine. up on me. Pistols. Oh. Just going to get pretty much dropped dead here. You know, it's fairly imaginable stuff, but it's just like Mole and Jenko both combining. Both of them firing two apiece. Crucial is going to tap back into play with a trusty P250, but there's only so much you can ask from one man. It's Fish123. Step up. They get themselves just another round. So that's the town. It's a lot like. Uh, like clocks, 24 hour time. Obviously, you take the one away and take off two. With this, you add a 10 to fish. And you add six to Imperial. Five. That. That's good. Five. So remember that, guys. What's that your the charter tip right there? How you got taught to fill the time? Yep. So if it's a fish, add 10. Okay. That was what my mum taught me. That's always worked out well. There you go, folks. UK Masters, bring your life advice. Smear with a whiff, though. That is very awkward. If you'd have got that opening frag, things could have been different. 
But getting taken down actually leaves Fish in what potentially could be a round going the way of Imperial. Obviously, they finally have a good buyout in terms of their economy, Flakes. They could do some damage here. Yeah, this could certainly be a round that could try and take advantage of them. Or Jacob just lurching somewhat over towards Monster, but perfect timing for Roma to face off this one. Screws out with the M4, finds an easy pick for the one, goes up for the second, and gets away with it. Jacob, one bad decision, spirals out of control, allows things back into play for Fish123 as they just nip at the hills of Imperial bit by bit, eking it down to a four versus three. It's looking so damn positive as the Molotov is going to force even more of a predicament for reason. He's going to get taken down by Jenko, and this is looking disastrous now. Things were so good, but it's all gone so wrong. Jenko going to take down Bosa with just another frag. Roma, the cherry on top as he punishes is crucial. Fish 1, 2, 3. They get closer and closer to the very, very end. Imperial are looking out of this one. Yeah, that is awkward. Around that potentially was the only lifeline Imperial have been casted for a very long time. It doesn't go their way. Fish now obviously on 15 rounds. 5 out of 10. In a good situation to try and lock it down. Meanwhile, Imperial stuck just with the SMGs. They've been waddling around. You know, they found some SMGs. They've had to use them. They just have nothing else to play with. And this should be essentially the end of the fairy tale. This is where things will get closed out for the first chapter, I'd imagine. Well, now I've got to turn just on the page to get to that point. It is going to be a venture happening towards Connector. A double face, potentially one. Also, is going to lead us towards Monster, as that's also going to be a peak coming in from the CT side. They do flash themselves in, but they don't think Keita can hit shots, and that's just a bit of a mistake, really. Keita, he will just take you down. He will just slap you around a bit as he whips out the tech to try and do the second job. Boaster with the UMP punishes Mole. Bring it back to a four versus four. Tries to go in for a bit of a second. There's a bit of damage, but can't quite find it. But then repeat after repeat. Oh, but trades yet again. Fairly efficient trading so far. They're doing a good job of actually baiting fish into taking fights where they're not in advantageous positions. Keita, though, bounces back straight away. That's two frags for the man so far into the round. Smuya is with him as well. Smuya wasn't looking too hot last round, though. Hopefully, he started to turn that temperature up as they need to do some damage. Connor is up close personal, ready for the right one. The strike, the peak comes through. Connor will take down Keita. An easy transition over towards Smuya as well. And Imperial stay alive. But this is the thing. They only have seven rounds on the board. They need to do so much if they want to try and take this into OT. Because Fish123 are at match point already. It's such a big ask for a team like Imperial to be flawless because we've seen a lot of mistakes in Forest. A lot of very crumbly plays. And, uh, you know, there and then, for example, I just asked the question of why since we were aggressive oh, with the orbs the first through. map. Crumble through. Oh. <laughs> Either way, let's see where this one is going to swing towards our Fish123. Just going to begin to end this one, as you said. Or is it going to be a bit more... Of Imperial action as they continue to chime in towards the second half. The M4 of Boaster is going to start strong as he does take the fight on Keita, this time around winning it fairly convincingly. So that already brings them up to that one man advantage, but they've got to keep on adding it to a tally. It can't just be one pick and one and done. True, need to do so much more. This is the thing, they're being able to find occasional openers, but that's kind of it. Imperial as well, as we've touched on so many times, it is do or die in all of these rounds. So you get that first frag on the board, try and double it up. Mole is going to be boosting Smear to the elevated angle. Let's see what he actually can achieve. Nothing will be there for him to spot out. No prey has been detected so far from the eagle that is swooping above all the slough from Ice Age. Love it. Sid, his name is. <laughs> Good old Sid. Oh, talking about Sid, he is going to begin to get himself set up to push on towards the Sniper Rover with the rifle as well. Doing a bit of a similar response. Nice angle, but just quite make it work and it's just going to be Roma just oh. a wall wonder in and just do all the work for this T-Side really nothing out of the ordinary it's just Roma being Roma at this point he's certainly woken up towards the latter end of this game Boaster is going to try and just walk right through the smoke but that's going to fade at the worst time for him now because he's stuck between the smoke and the flames he doesn't know where to go catches off smooth on towards short there's a trade to be found from Mole and there needs it all on towards crucial a 1v2 to play for oh, what a flick of the first but can he get the second surely not Mole Gonna create for the pillar, but Crucial, he's being quicker. Crucial's gonna find it. The defuse oh, wow. soon to follow up. There is Crucial. There is that AWP that we expected to see. And a very big impact round. It keeps the dream from Imperial alive. That's so huge from Crucial. Just what they needed. The only thing is, it's kind of like, it's too late from what we expect to see coming out from Crucial. We want to see those sort of moments constantly. Normally, he displays that as well. He can be so huge. He is that prolific fragger day in, day out. Unreal talent when it comes down to his individual prowess with the AWP. We've just not seen him go for those aggressive plays. Now it seems like the confidence is back with him. The hype is there. He is ready to do some damage as he goes for the aggressive face early on. Misses the shot. You so awesome. We are trying to trade it back as well. Up his personal. Smear finds Boaster. It looked like it was oh, a good start. Smear. Things go so wrong as Smear just tears his way through. And Imperial at this point is way too far gone. The ship is out of the harbor. 
That's, that's what I said though, one big play. Then we're gonna find a tag on towards Jacob and the frag. Connor with the EMP. You can try, my friend. You can try. But it's a one versus five, and H saw nothing. That's just too much. Surely that is too much. Yeah. This uh, really should be over at this point, obviously. They're just hunting Connor right now. Keeping him penned in. This is unfair at this point. This is just abuse. As he gets trapped in, goes to the peak. Keita will put a bullet straight into his brain. Takes him down. And there you have it. That is going to be 16... Eight. 16-8 will be the scoreline <laughs> that comes through there.